friends and welcome back to First Chapter Friday. This week I have I Text Dead People by Rose Cooper. One of our lighter reads. Chapter 1, Anna. There's no such thing as ghosts. Ghosts don't exist. Annabelle Craven tried to convince herself that there was no reason to be freaked. But when the raw iron gate slammed shut behind her with a loud clunk, she knew she wasn't crazy. She definitely had a reason. Anna glanced back, shuddering slightly at the sight of the house looming behind her. Her house. Madison Manor was run down and creepy, something seriously right out of a horror film. The dingy gray paint was flaked and peeling, and the window panes were smeared with grime and dirt. The backyard was overgrown with bushes, and brambles reached out like claws, ready to snatch anyone who dared walk too close. It looked like it had been abandoned for several years, not just a few months. Looking at it made Anna's heart sink. When she and her mom had gotten the news that they inherited a mansion from her mom's estranged uncle, Anna had thought that it would mean leaving their cramped one-bedroom apartment, getting away from the bad memories and the awful luck that always seemed to follow them. She hadn't realized their fresh start would include living in a small town where the dead outnumbered the living. Turning away, she forced herself to keep walking. Her eyes darted nervously around the deserted graveyard. She couldn't shake the feeling that she was being watched. But that was impossible. The mansion was the only house on the dead-end street, and her mom was already at work. Anna quickened her pace, not wanting to be late for her first day of, at her new school. She focused on the trees, not allowing her gaze to stray to the tombstones on either side of the path, or to that spooky statue on her right, or the raven that had just landed on the statue's hand. Focus. She never got creeped out like this. Never. Well, except when she was reading her horror novels, or when she stayed up late watching Hitchcock's movies with the lights off because she was a risk taker like that, and she loved being scared. But that was different. That was intentional. And this was, this was real life. Dead people stay dead. Anna told herself she was being a baby. Winchester Cemetery wasn't really haunted, despite the rumor she'd overheard. The girls in line in front of her at the discount store had been so involved in their conversation, they didn't even notice Anna as she, they talked about the creepy old burial ground next to Mad Manor. My brother totally saw a ghost there, one of the girls had said. The, the place is haunted for sure. Anna had rolled her eyes, just stories made up by poor people living in a small town, but a shiver ran down her spine now just the same. She plucked a leaf from her detangled hair and picked up her pace. Whose great idea was it to take a short cut through the, short cut through the cemetery anyway? Oh right, hers. But she'd been at home in bed with all the lights on when she'd made that decision. It seemed pretty stupid now. Anna chewed on her fingernail. Her senses were picking up every little detail surrounding her, each setting her more on edge than the one before. The crunching of her sneakers on loose gravel. The scent of fresh cut flowers on the graves. The light drops of rain. Her mom hadn't mentioned anything about rain that morning. In fact, she told Anna she, to bring a sweater in case of wind. Anna had listened. She always did. She pulled the thing part again closer against her body. Then her foot hit a rock as she slipped, her wrist grazing the co concrete pavement. She could feel the sting immediately, feel the warm blood welling up along her right hand and dripping to the ground. She sat up, ignoring the persistent pain, pulled an old tissue from her worn jean pocket and wrapped it snugly around her wrist. Suddenly, the tiny hairs on the back of her neck prickled and an unexplainable surge of panic ran through her. Something wasn't right, that much she knew. She just couldn't explain what it was. A flash of movement caught her eye from the dark forest ahead, almost as if someone was running. Annabelle froze at the exact same moment someone whispered to her ear, don't move. The male voice was silky smooth. Anna stood perfectly still, her muscles tense and her eyes closed tightly. A new shiver ran down her backbone. Her mind began reeling with possible dangers. Maybe dealing with you won't be as difficult as I thought, the guy said in, in that dangerously safe tone. Anna didn't respond, couldn't respond. His footsteps slid over leaves as he circled around until he stood directly in front of her. She flinched when his warm breath reeking of garlic and cigarette hit her face. She forced her eyes to open. He was tall and lanky with eyes as gray as the cloudy, miserable day. His face was gaunt and his hair wet when the and his hair wet from the raindrops was so black that it had a blue tint. A wiry beard traced the sharp angles of his jaw, making him look older than the teenager he no doubt was. He stood perfectly straight, hands clasped behind him. Instinctively Anna took a step back. His lips twisted into a half sneer. What do you want? Anna tried to keep her voice from shaking. You have something that belongs to me. His eyes wandered over her before settling on the messenger bag she held tightly against her body. Um, 
I think you've mistaken me for somebody else, she said carefully, watching the expression on his face as his eyes flashed. The rain picked up. Annabelle, he breathed, venom filling his voice. The dull rumble of thunder was distant in the sky. Don't mess with me. Hand it over. She stared at him, shocked. How did he know her name? She shook her head vigorously, stumbling back in panic and falling over a low headstone. She scrambled to her feet, ignoring the pain and backed further away. No, she said. A bolt of lightning shrieked across the sky at the exact same moment she turned and ran. The rain pelted her face as she tore through the graveyard, the guy's footsteps not far behind. The forest loomed closer. Annabelle had no idea what or who lurked inside, but at that moment, it was her best shot. She would take running into the unknown forest over a crazy guy any day. It was almost pitch black in the woods. Rain dripped through the drenched canopy above her. She zigzagged through the trees, looping around branches and hopping over rocks. Those years of dance classes were definitely paying off. She pushed through the thick undergrowth and shivered as more rain splattered her. The wind died down as she ran further and further into the forest. Out of breath, Anna slowed to a walk and stopped, turning in a circle. The only sound now was the pounding rain and her own heavy breathing. She didn't think she was still being followed, but she wasn't certain. Then it hit her. She was lost in the center of the forest with no sense of direction, no clue which way was out, and no way of contacting her mom. Last week, Anna had stupidly left her phone in the pocket of her University of Santa Cruz sweatshirt and thrown it in the wash. Of course, her mom had chosen to use that occasion to teach her a lesson in responsibility. The only way Anna could get her a new phone was to buy it herself. Anna swallowed her panic. At least she had ditched that creepy guy. And if he, she didn't show up for school, the academy would call her mom and she would come looking for her. Eventually. Up ahead, she saw a glimmer of light through the trees. As she inched forward, Anna stumbled over a large root sticking out from an undergrown tree. This had to be a record for the most falls in one day. Her clumsiness had start, started right around the time her dance class ended, but this was bordering on loser status. She looked down and a glint of silver caught her eye. She reached under the root and pulled out a phone. It was in a black scruff case, although the phone itself seemed in good condition. Not a scratch marred its slick surface. No fingerprints smudged the screen. Anna palmed the phone, turning it over several times. Who would leave this out here and why? Suddenly she was overcome with relief. She could call for help. She punched the power button repeatedly. Nothing happened. The phone remained dark. Dread settled like a rock in the pit of her stomach. The battery was probably dead. Nothing ever went right for her. Why would it be any different now? She unzipped the small front pocket of her knockoff black messenger bag and slipped the phone in. When she reached the edge of the clearing, the light was gone. There was nothing but complete darkness. She pushed a branch out of the way, sending icy water droplets showering down on her skin. Nice one, loser, she muttered to herself as she hesitantly stepped into the clearing. A twig snapped at her right. Her heart fearfully thrummed in her chest. She took off at a sprint, everything blurring as she ran. Her lungs burned and her legs felt wobbly and weak. Operating on pure adrenaline, she kept going until she found her way out. Dun, dun, dun. So if you would like to read this book or anything similar, give us a call at the desk and we'd be happy to set some aside for you.